Hello and welcome to the Yellow Chair Classroom. And uh, children, I hope all of you would have enjoyed all my stories. All of them were classics and uh, written by brilliant authors. And here is yet another story, the fantastic Mr. Fox. It's a story about a fox and his family trying to outwit a bunch of farmers. And the fantastic Mr. Fox was written by Roald Dahl. He was a British novelist, a short story writer. He served in the Royal Air Force. During the Second World War, he became a flying ace intelligent agent. His stories are known for their unexpected endings. He was the world's best-selling author. It's my earnest desire that children should read and enjoy his stories. Come on, now let's go to the story, The Fantastic Mr. Fox. Bogus and buns and bean, one fat, one short, one lean. These horrible crooks, so different in looks, were nonetheless equally mean. Bogus, buns and bean were the nastiest three farmers you could ever meet. They hate Mr. Fox and plan to shoot starve or dig him out of his hole. But Mr. Fox is much cleverer than they are and he has a cunning plan of his own. Down in the valley there were three farms. The owners of these farms had done well. They were rich men. They were also nasty men. All the three of them were about as nasty and mean as any men you could meet. Their names were Farmer Bogus, Farmer Buns and Farmer Bean. Bogus was a chicken farmer. He kept thousands of chickens. He was enormously fat. This was because he ate three boiled chickens smothered with dumplings every day for breakfast, lunch and supper. Buns was a duck and goose farmer. He kept thousands of ducks and geese. He was a kind of pot-bellied dwarf. He was so short, his chin would have been under water in the shallow end of any swimming pool in the world. His food was donuts and goose livers. He mashed the livers into a disgusting paste and then stuffed the paste into the donuts. This diet gave him a tummy ache and a beastly temper. Bean was a turkey and apple farmer. He kept thousands of turkeys in an orchard full of apple trees. He never ate any food at all. Instead, he drank gallons of strong cider which he made from the apples in his orchard. He was as thin as a pencil and the cleverest of them all. Bogus and buns and bean, one fat, one short, one lean. These horrible crooks, so different in looks, were none the less equally mean. That is what the children around used to sing when they saw them. Now let's meet Mr. Fox. On a hill above the valley there was a wood. In the wood there was a huge tree. Under the tree there was a hole. In the hole lived Mr. Fox and Mrs. Fox and their four small foxes. Every evening, as soon as it got dark, Mr. Fox would say to Mrs. Fox, Well, my darling, what shall it be this time? A plum chicken from Bogus? A duck or a goose from Buns? Or a nice turkey from Bean? And when Mrs. Fox had told him what she wanted, Mr. Fox 
would creep down into the valley in the darkness of the night and help himself. Bogus and Buns and Bean knew very well what was going on and it made them wild with rage. They were not men who liked to give anything away. Less still did they like anything to be stolen from them. So every night each of them would take his shotgun and hide in a dark place somewhere on his own farm hoping to catch the robber. But Mr. Fox was too clever for them. He always approached a farm with the wind blowing in his face. And this meant that if any man were lurking in the shadows ahead, the wind would carry the smell of that man to Mr. Fox's nose from far away. Thus, if Mr. Bogus was hiding behind his chicken house number one, Mr. Fox would smell him out from 50 yards off and quickly change direction, heading for chicken house number four at the other end of the farm. Dang and blast that lousy beast, cried Bogus. I'd like to rip his guts out, said Buns. He must be killed, cried Bean. But how, said Bogus, how on earth can we catch the blighter? Bean picked his nose delicately with a long finger. I have a plan, he said. You have never had a decent plan yet, said Buns. Shut up and listen, said Bean. Tomorrow night we will all hide just outside the hole where the fox lives. We'll wait there until he comes out. Then bang, 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 bang. Very clever, said Buns. But first we shall have to find the hole. My dear Buns, I've already found it, said the crafty bean. It's up in the wood on the hill. It's under a huge tree. Well, my darling, said Mr. Fox, what shall it be tonight? I think we'll have duck tonight, said Mrs. Fox. Bring us two fat ducks, if you please. One for you and me and one for the children. Ducks shall be, said Mr. Fox, Bunce's best. Now, do be careful, said Mrs. Fox. My darling, said Mr. Fox, I can smell those goons a mile away. I can even smell one from the other. Bogies gives off a filthy stink of rotten chicken skins. Buns reeks of goose livers and as for bean, the fumes of apple cider hang around him like a poisonous gas. Yes, but just don't get careless, said Mrs. Fox. You know they'll be waiting for you, all three of them. Don't you worry about me, said Mr. Fox. I'll see you later. But Mr. Fox would not have been quite so cocky had he known exactly where the three farmers were waiting at that moment. They were just outside the entrance of, to the hole, each one crouching behind a tree with his gun loaded. And what is more, they had chosen their position very carefully, making sure that the wind was not blowing from them towards the fox's hole. In fact, it was blowing in the opposite direction. There was no chance of them being smelled out. Mr. Fox crept up the dark tunnel to the mouth of his hole. He poked his long, handsome face out into the night air and sniffed once. He moved an inch or two forward and stopped. He sniffed again. He was always especially careful when coming out of the hole. He inched forward a little more. 
the front half of his body was now in the open his black nose twitched from side to side sniffing and sniffing for the scent of danger he found none and he was just about to go trotting forward into the wood when he heard or thought he heard a tiny noise a soft rustling sound as though someone had moved a foot ever so gently through a patch of dry leaves mr fox flattened his body against the ground and lay very still his ears pricked he waited a long time but he heard nothing more it must have been a field mouse he told himself or some other small animal he crept a little further out of the hole then further still he was almost right out in the open now he took a last careful look around the wood was murky and very still somewhere in the sky the moon was shining just then his sharp night eyes caught a glint of something bright behind a tree and not far away it was a silver speck of moonlight shining on a polished surface mr fox lay still watching it what on earth was it now it was moving it was coming up and up great heavens it was the barrel of a gun quick as a whip mr fox jumped back into the hole and at the same instant the entire wood exploded around him bang 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 the smoke from the three guns floated upward in the night air bogus and buns and bean came out from behind their trees and walked towards the hole did we get him said bean one of them shone a flashlight on the hole and there on the ground in the circle of the light half in and half out of the hole lay the poor tattered blood stained remains of a fox's tail bean picked it up we got the tail but it was the fox he said tossing the thing away tank and blast said bogus we shot too late we should have let it fly the moment he poked his head out he won't be poking it out again in a hurry bun said bean pulled a flask from his pocket and took a swig of cider then he said it will take 3 days at least before he gets hungry enough to come out again i'm not sitting around here waiting for that let's dig him out ah said bogus now we are talking sense we can dig him out in a couple of hours we know he is there I reckon there's a whole family of them down that hole Bun said Then we'll have the lot said Bean get the shawls Down the hole Mrs Fox was tenderly licking the stump of Mr Fox's tail to stop the bleeding It was the finest tail for miles around she said between licks It hurts said Mr Fox I know it does sweetheart but it will soon get better and it will soon grow again dad said one of the small foxes it will never grow again said mr fox i shall be tailless for the rest of my life he looked very glum there was no food for the foxes that night and soon the children and mrs fox dozed off but mr fox couldn't sleep because of the pain in the stump of his tail well he thought i suppose i'm lucky to be alive at all and now they have found a hole we are going to have to move out as soon as possible we'll never get any peace if we what was that he turned his head sharply and listened the noise he heard now was the most frightening noise a fox can ever hear 
the scrap scrap scrapping of the shoals digging into the soil wake up he shouted they are digging us out mrs fox was wide awake in one second she sat up quivering all over are you sure that's it she whispered i'm positive listen they'll kill my children cried mrs fox never said mr fox but darling they will sobbed mrs fox you know they will scrunch 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 went the shoals above their heads small stones and bits of earth began falling from the roof of the tunnel how will they kill us mummy asked one of the small foxes his round black eyes were huge with fright will there be dogs he said mrs fox began to cry she gathered her four children close to her and held them tight suddenly there was a loud crunch about the about their heads and the sharp end of a shawl came right through the ceiling The sight of this awful thing seemed to have an electric effect upon the fox. He jumped up and shouted, "I've got it. Come on, there's not a moment to lose. Why didn't I think it before?" "Think of what, dad? A fox can dig quicker than a man," shouted Mr. Fox, beginning to dig. "Nobody in the world can dig as quick as a fox." The soil began to fly out furiously behind Mr. Fox as he started to dig for dear life with his front feet. Mrs. Fox ran forward to help him. So did the four fox children. "Go downwards," ordered Mr. Fox. "We have got to go deep, as deep as we possibly can." The tunnel began to grow longer and longer. It sloped steeply downward. Deeper and deeper below the surface of the ground it went. The mother and the father and all the four children were digging together. Their front legs were moving so fast you couldn't see them and gradually the scrunching and scraping of the shoals became fainter and fainter. After about an hour Mr Fox stopped digging. Hold it he said. They all stopped. They turned and looked back up the long tunnel they had just dug. All was quiet. Phew said Mr Fox. I think we have done it. They'll never get as deep as this. Well done everyone. They all sat down panting for breath and Mrs Fox said to her children I should like you to know that if it wasn't for your father we should all be dead by now your father is a fantastic fox he looked at his wife Mr Fox looked at his wife and she smiled he loved her more than ever As the sun rose the next morning, Bogus and Buns and Bean were still digging. They had dug a hole so deep you could have put a house into it. But they had not yet come to the end of the fox's tunnel. They were all very tired and cross. Dang and blast, said Bogus. Whose rotten idea was this? Bean's idea, said Buns. Bogus and Buns both stared at Bean. Bean took another swig of cider, then put the flask back into his pocket without offering it to others. "Listen," he said angrily, "I want that fox. I'm going to get that fox. I'm not giving in till I have strung him up over my front porch dead as a dumpling." We can't get him by digging that's for sure said the fat bogus I've had enough of digging Buns the little potbelly dwarf looked up at Bean and said Have you got any more stupid ideas then What said Bean I can't hear you Bean never took a bath 
he never even washed as a result his ear holes were clogged with all kinds of muck and wax and bits of chewing gum and dead flies and stuff like that this made him deaf speak louder he said to buns and buns shouted back got any more stupid ideas Bean rubbed the back of his neck with a dirty finger. He had a boil coming there and it itched. What we need in this job, he said, is machines. Mechanical shovels. We'll have him out in five minutes with mechanical shovels. This was a pretty good idea and the two had to admit it. All right then, Bean said, taking charge. Bogus, you stay here and see the fox doesn't escape. Buns and I will go and fetch our machinery. If he tries to go out, shoot him quick. The long thin Bean walked away. The tiny Buns trotted after him. The fat Bogus stayed where he was with his gun pointing at the foxhole. Soon two enormous caterpillar tractors with mechanical shovels on their front ends came clanking into the wood. Bean was driving one and Buns the other. The machines were both black. They were murderous, brutal looking monsters. Here we go then, shouted Bean. Death to the fox, shouted Buns. The machines went to work, biting huge mouthfuls of soil out of the hill. The big tree under which Mr. Fox had dug the hole in the first place was toppled like a matchstick. On all sides, Rocks were sent flying and trees were falling and the noise was deafening. Down in the tunnel, the foxes crouched, listening to the terrible clanking and banging overhead. What's happening, Dad? cried the small foxes. What are they doing? Mr. Fox did not know what was happening or what they were doing. It's an earthquake, cried Mrs. Fox. Look, said one of the small foxes. Our tunnels got shorter. I can see the daylight. They all looked around. And yes, the mouth of the tunnel was only a few feet away from them now. And in the circle of the daylight beyond they could see the two huge black tractors almost on top of them tractors shouted mr fox and mechanical shovel dig or dig for your lives dig 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 for your lives dig 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 now there began a des desperate race the machines against the foxes. In the beginning, the hill looked like this. After about an hour, as the machines bit away more and more soil from the hilltop, it looked like this. Sometimes the foxes would gain a little ground and the clanking noises would grow fainter and Mr. Fox would say, we are going to make it, I am sure we, we are. But then a few moments later, the machines would come back at them and the crunch of the mighty shovels would get louder and louder. Once the foxes actually saw the sharp metal edge of one of the shovels as it scrapped up the earth just behind them. Keep going my darlings, panted Mr. Fox, don't give up. Keep going, the fat bogus shouted to Buns and Bean. We'll get him any moment now. Have you caught sight of him yet? Bean called back. Not yet, shouted bogus, but I think you're close. I'll pick him up with my bucket, 
shouted Buns. I'll chop him to pieces. But by lunch time, the machines were still at it, and so were the poor foxes. The hill now looked like this. The farmers didn't stop for lunch. They were too keen to finish the job. Hey there, Mr. Fox! Yelled Buns, leaning out of his tractor. We are coming to get you now. You had your last chicken, yelled Bogus. You'll never come prowling around my farm again. A sort of madness had taken hold of the three men: the tall, skinny Bean and dwarfish, pot-bellied Buns were driving the machines like maniacs. racing the motors and making the shovels dig at a terrific speed the fat bogus was hopping about like a dervish and shouting faster faster by 5 o'clock in the afternoon this was what had happened to the hill the hole the machines had dug was like the crater of a volcano It was such an extraordinary sight that crowds of people came rushing out from the surrounding villages to have a look. They stood on the edge of the crater and stared down at Bogus and Buns and Bean. "Hey there, Bogus, what's going on? We are after a fox. You must be mad." The people jeered and laughed. but this only made the three farmers more furious and more obstinate and more determined than ever not to give up until they had caught the fox at 6 o'clock in the evening bean switched off the motor of his tractor and climbed down from the driver's seat buns did the same both men had had enough They were tired and stiff from driving the tractors all day. They were also hungry. Slowly they walked over to the small fox's hole in the bottom of the huge crater. Bean's face was purple with rage. Buns was cursing the fox with dirty words that cannot be printed. Bogus came waddling up. Gang and blast that filthy stinking fox he said what the heck do we do now i tell you what we don't do bean said we don't let him go we'll never let him go buns declared never 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 cried bogus did you hear that mr fox yelled bean bending low and shouting down the hole it's not over yet mr fox we are not going home till we have strung you up dead as a dingbat whereupon the three men all shook hands with one another and swore a solemn oath that they would not go back to their farms until the fox was caught What's the next move? asked Buns, the pot-bellied dwarf. We are sending you down the hole to fetch him up, said Bean. Down you go, you miserable midget. Not me, screamed Buns, running away. Bean made a sickly smile. When he smiled, you saw his scarlet gums. You saw more gums than teeth. Then there's only one thing to do he said we starve him out we camp here day and night watching the hole he'll come out in the end he'll have to so bogus and buns and bean sent messages down to their farms asking for tents sleeping bags and supper that evening three tents were put up in the crater on the hill one for bogus one for buns and one for bean the tents surrounded mr fox's hole and the three farmers sat outside their tents eating their supper bogus had three boiled chickens smothered in dumplings 
once had six donuts filled with disgusting goose liver paste and bean had two gallons of cider all three of them kept their guns beside them bogus picked up a steaming chicken and held it close to the fox's hole can you smell this mr fox he shouted lovely tender chicken why don't you come up and get it the rich scent of chicken wafted down the tunnel where the foxes were crouching oh dad said one of the small foxes couldn't we just sneak up and snatch it out of his hand don't you dare said mrs fox that's just what they want you to do but we are so hungry they cried how long will it be till we get something to eat their mother didn't answer them nor did their father there was no answer to give as darkness fell buns and bean switched on the powerful headlamps of the two tractors and shone them onto the hole now said bean we'll take it on turn to keep watch one watches while two sleep and so on all through the night bogus said what if the fox digs a hole right through the hill and comes out on the other side you didn't think of that one did you of course i did said bean pretending he had go on then tell us the answer said bogus Bean picked something small and black out of his ear and flicked it away. How many men have you got working on your farm? he asked. 35, Bogus said. I've got 36, Bun said. And I've got 37, Bean said. That makes 108 men altogether. We must order them to surround the hill. Each man will have a gun and a flashlight. There will be no escape then for Mr. Fox. So the order went down to the farms and that night 108 men formed a tight ring around the bottom of the hill. They were armed with sticks and guns and hatchets and pistols and all sorts of other horrible weapons. This made it quite impossible for a fox or indeed for any other animal to escape from the hill. The next day the watching and waiting went on. Bogus and Buns and Bean sat upon small stools staring at the fox's hole. They didn't talk much. They just sat with their guns on their laps. Every so often Mr Fox would creep a little closer towards the mouth of the tunnel and take a sniff then he would creep back again and say they are still there are you quite sure Mrs Fox would ask positive said Mr Fox i can smell that man bean a mile away he stinks Now part 1 has come to an end. Considering the lengthy story, we have extended to the second part which you can read shortly. Wait for the fox's tantrums and I'll meet all of you shortly. Keep watching and thank you for watching my video.